Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> a little box, I'm in a little box today. <laughs> uh, uh, hey, everybody. It's David here with David R. Becker, Becker Art, <laughs> Pain Lungs. And so here we are back in the studio. Um, I was away for a couple weeks there, and sorry about the. I think three weeks ago we had the fire. <laughs> Actually, not a fire. <laughs> we had the fire, um, and then we went, and we didn't have um, much luck with um, the week where at Dillman's. There's no Wi-Fi. Then we did a nice one last week, but here we are doing a um, a lighthouse. So today, uh, and also I don't have a script today, so I was in a rush to get down here, and so we're putting all kinds of stuff together here. And look at it, look at it. I have a whole bind, um, my whole bind vest. I finally found it. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, let's see who's all here. So you have Lynn so far. We got Sue and Pam. I'm sure there's a bunch of other people coming in. Hey, Helen. And um, let's see what the beer is today. Today we have a Guinness. A um, Guinness, what is this? A Nitro Cold Brew Coffee. And I hear that this has a little thing inside it that's going to splash all over here. So I'm going to do this over here real quick to open it. It's got one of those chargers inside. So... Yeah, you're always coming out. <laughs> it's actually pop, it's popping out here. So it's got these, one of these little chargers inside. I guess it'll make, make it taste better. Oh, it smells like chocolate coffee already. Ooh, this is going to be good. All right. So our coffee, our coffee, yes, our Guinness coffee, nitro cold coffee. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Let's see. That's going to be about a, about a nine. Nine paintbrush beer. All right, so let's go. Uh, what we got today is this lighthouse, and there's a lot, of, a lot of changes on this thing. And but for first, all you newcomers, let me just show you first where my supplies are. Here's my supplies that we're using real quickly. My whole band paints, my brushes, and my Stonehenge Aqua I'm using today. And then we're going to go right over to my where you get all this information. Anybody who's new here, you're going to go to my website, and everything hopefully is on there. My um, daily painting. My, um, this is where you're going to get all the info on, like, this is what we're painting today. And this is what we did two weeks ago. And last week we did the Tuscany scene, which was very cool. So thanks a lot, everybody, guys, for coming by. And um, let's go right to our, our value, uh, let's go to our value study first. All right. So what are we going to do today? So today I told a couple of you on our Facebook group, the Facebook group. If you want to get that, go to my Facebook page and go to my website and you'll find it there too. And so anyways, this is the photo up here. And if you look, this, this house is so far up in the corner up here, uh, the lighthouse. And I feel like the lighthouse was kind of squatty, <laughs> if that makes sense. So what did I do? When I drew it up, here's my drawing. And I drew it up. I made the lighthouse a little bit taller just to make it a little bit more oomph in it. <laughs> That's a word, oomph. <laughs> a little oomph in the lighthouse. I made it a little bit bigger, a little bit taller. Also, these these trees right here were all in a row and they're all the same size kind of except for these two and it just didn't have the same kind of look where you go up and down up and down and and try to make it different than what you have in the photo also these trees over here you notice i took the whole lighthouse and brought it down and over a little bit so i brought it it's see how close it is to the side of the wall here so this is the one i did this afternoon um in class so this is not this one we're going to change it around a little bit because I did a couple mistakes here. I still made these trees too you know, much the same. Same thing with these three trees. I'm going, to, I'm going to actually put them a little bit higher up there, and I'll show you that in a second. I took the lighthouse, brought it down. I upped the, the um, lighthouse up a little bit so you see it's not as squatty. I put it up over the rooftop because this rooftop and the lighthouse are pretty much at the same level, kind of tangent to each other. It's not really a tangent. It's just evenness. And so I wanted to bring this up a little bit. So I brought it up a little bit, made this a little bit taller, gave it a little bit more oomph. All right. So, and then we had this whole rock thing here. And so you go from the light to dark, light to dark, light to dark, light to dark on these rocks. I'm going to give you a little example of that today too, when we're doing this actual painting. Hey, Joyce. Um, Joyce did a great job with her um, colors in class. She did some unbelievable colors, much nicer than I had done here. We took, also took the... Um, horizon line and i brought it up right now the horizon line if you look always check out your photos and look see what's what the problems are because every photo has a little bit of problems to it this horizon line is tangent to the top of this rock and then there's a little island back there really small so what did i do i brought it up i brought it up and brought it to the side here a little bit because this whole area here is all empty 
except for the clouds right here. I want to make something up over here, a little bit something so my eye kind of goes over there as a secondary. Otherwise, I have everything on this side, and it's going to weigh down this side and just bring it down. Now, a couple of ladies had done it up and down, like a vertical, and cut it off right here. And that's actually a nice, not a bad thing to do. So if you want to do a vertical and just cut it off right down here, right down the side, and I can put in this rock, just, you can even cut in some of the rocks or just a little bit of the ocean here. That's fine. And so how many of you saw the big dog um, or the kind of a, now I look at it, it's kind of like a hogwart pig. <laughs> um, do you see the dog right here? Look at the dog with the mouth. There's his mouth. There's the nose. And he's got a nice um, hair on the top of his head. <laughs> and so once I saw that, I couldn't stop seeing that. So I got rid of the dog. I got rid of the dog face in front of the um, thing. So we took care of all that stuff by moving the horizon line up, put the 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 um, island out here a little bit farther out. As you can see, I made it really light. And then this one, I actually, Joyce gave me a great idea. Here, Joyce is visiting us right now, watching. Um, we're gonna do this in a stormy situation. I had the light sunlight here with the reflections. You can see what that is. And I'm gonna take it this time and make this whole sky here very stormy on this side, nice and dark over here. I may still put the sunlight down here, like it's just about to go away or shining through some really cloudy, you know, where you, sometimes you get the storms and you get the clouds coming through there. So let's see what we can do with this. And we're gonna change it up a little bit. And again, move your building down and into the picture a little bit. And made it also a little bit bigger than the actual photo, than what it is in the, in the, the scene, in the actual photo. It's just because I just want it a little bit bigger. That's up to you if you want to, you, get, you can do that. All right, so let's go to our tabletop and hello. <laughs> now you can see me all the time with my nice, look at this, nice. Holbein, <laughs> and my Holbein hat. So we're all Holbein up here. <laughs> so let's go with our Holbein. Oh, did you guys see my, um, I now have red brushes. Did you see my dipping my brushes into my dippy, dip it do, or whatever they call that stuff? So um, these are great now, because you can just, you can get them all wet and nothing's gonna go inside this little ferrule here. And it's kind of got a really nice grip to it now. I love it. I love these um, brushes now that I put dipped them into this thing. I never had brushes that had uh, like a tool grip <laughs> to it. Anyway, so here's the here's the scene that I had done before. And if you can see, it's it's kind of um, sunny. Sun's like almost going down. Afternoon sun. It's hitting the top of the rocks really bright. Down here you get the um, dark. My home is a little bit too. The um, I just noticed that I just got a home here is that the shadows should be a little bit darker on this side and on, on the actual lighthouse. And so I'm gonna do tone that down, but we're gonna do it a little bit more stormy and we're gonna have a nice storm coming in here, make it a little bit darker. All right, so let's get going from here. One more toast guys before we get going, cause this is a, it's a pretty good beer. Guinness from, I was gonna say Duluth. That's where I just came from. <laughs> um, from our friends in Ireland, <laughs> Dublin, Ireland. Okay, so let's go here and you can tell I really clean my palette again <laughs> And any questions anybody has questions, let me know. Can you share your revised sketch? Um, this is the revised sketch you can see right here. I had done that um, where I, I am going to um, let's See where I got pencil here somewhere. I do want to do one thing and that's make this one tree. Oh boy <laughs> Reached over too far here so this tree all are in the same row, right? So I want to make this one a little bit bigger because I felt like they're all the same. One, two, three, four. They're all divided evenly. So I'm going to put one in here. Just going to put that in there. And then I'm going to think I'm going to put this one, make this one tall and just kind of bring it up and make this more important, kind of bring it off the side here. So it's, it's uneven. I don't want it to be even, those trees. I want them to look like they're different spacing and... Nothing's good when you put it even, unless you do a formal composition, but we don't want this to be a formal composition. So thanks, Pam, for that question. And again, questions, put them up there in the chat. I'm looking up every once in a while, and I'll see that. Hey, Ann. Hey, Ann Summers again from Trout Valley. Where is that Trout Valley? Uh, okay, let's go going. So I'm wetting everything here, and we're going to do a whole wash across everything. So we're taking wet and wet and wet. Had a great, 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 great. I met many of you at my Dillman's workshop, and many of you who come on every Thursday night. I, um, I'm sure, I'm sure you guys are on here. Sue Jacobs, I'm sure. We call her Sue Swirl. She did an unbelievable painting. 
And if you've seen her work here online um, on my on my Facebook um, goal page, um, you'll see that she does some amazing stuff. She did one of the flower paintings that we did in the, in, on a piece of plexiglass, and um, she made some unbelievable swirls. So we call her Sue, Sue Swirls. She made some Sue Swirls. Anyways, <laughs> we're going to go. We'll show that one day. Hopefully we can show that. So here I'm going through everything, right? Through the rocks, through the sky, because, again, I want to take my new rubber racer, put this underneath here, let it come down a little bit on an angle so that it kind of goes this direction when I'm doing some darks up there. But I am going to start with the lights part because the sun's going to be maybe right there. And so we'll put a little bit of warmth in the sun right there. I'm just going to kind of put it maybe right about there. It's pretty wet, so my brush is still wet, so it's going to be bleeding all over the place. But if I keep that spot a little bit, just the way of the paper will be good. And then we're going to go in with a nice dark, 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 dark. And we're going to kind of go from the top here. And let things drip down and we're going to make it nice and stormy in this in this picture maybe some grays i'm going to take some lavender mix my grays together with that purple i just had up here and then all this actually there's some gray over here in this corner i'm just going to re dip into there All right, Pam wants to download the copy of the sketch. Um, I'll have to see if I can't put it on, on maybe my website. I can put it underneath the underneath there. So let's make this so this is going to be the light right there. So we can let me tab right there a little bit because I want to put the um, lighthouse on because I want this to be a storm. And so maybe the lighthouse is actually working, even with this foggy, phasey um, sky where we're going to have a lot of darks in here. I want things to run, so I'm just going to take it, lift, lift it like this a little bit and let it kind of bleed downwards. I'm going to keep it around here so it looks like we're going to get a little bit of um, drippiness into the lighthouse. We're going to see what we can do. We'll keep a little bit of the sunlight showing through here. Maybe there's going to be some rays of light. Again, the, just, the sky has to be light, you know. Um, well, it'll be lighter than the rocks and stuff are going to be because if I do a stormy sky, then... I still want to make um, the sun in this, and I still want to make the sky lighter than where everything else is. Same composition, but um, just a little bit stormier. You can still have a stormy sky and make it um, still follow your still follow your lights and darks like that. It'll still be good. It's a little bit too vibrant, too colorful. I want this more purple, gray. I lost my sun. Okay, that went away. We'll get it back. We can always put white paint in there too if you want it back. I'm just going to go in here and get the. Sue's got an idea of taking a screenshot of the sketch. Um, so when I put it up there, just when it when stop the video right at one point, and you can get the you can get the shot a screenshot of the whole sketch I did. Somebody else said they asked that's why I put it up there today. Um, and again, it's this one right here. So if you go to a value study right here, maybe do a shot of here. I'll get this little arrow out of there. And if you take a shot of that too, you can do, take a screenshot of that. All right. So here we go there. Look at that. Oh, ho, ho. let's get some white in there. Let's get some white flying down there. Let's make this storm come alive. So we're just going to go in here and just going to put a little white. Like it's shining through. Maybe the sun's coming down through there. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Thanks, Sue Swirl. <laughs> She's going to be stuck with that name now. She does such a great job with that. <laughs> I'm not sure if Carr is um, online tonight, but she's another one of our um, Facebook page people that came to the Dillman's workshop. Thanks again, guys, for coming to the workshop. It's so fun seeing you guys in live. That's a sure good time to teach you know it's a little bit easier to teach i can see what you're doing here online it's great you can see what i'm doing but i can't see what you're doing so we'll just um keep on we got another one coming up in august um it's what it's going to be the acrylic one the acrylic class though this is watercolor that they showed up to i do have a acrylic one class which is actually like watercolor it's almost identical to watercolor because we do things in all these are different acrylics 
I look at that light on top of a dark. We're going to just let this float down. If I only knew how to get some swirls in here. So let's see. <laughs> All right. So that's pretty much the sky, I think. Let's go a little bit darker cloud through across the sun, which will be right here. We'll just do a nice, nice storm. Look at this sky. Isn't that amazing? What you can do with skies when you work wet into wet. Remember, I'm working wet into wet because I want soft edges. All the beginners out there, remember, you have to wet the surface to get a soft edge. And you work that soft edge in, in, the, in the water. And you got to make sure it's really floaty. You know, you always keep it floating. And then don't use too much water. You can't use more water than it's on the surface. If you use too much water, you're going to get water marks. Which actually, put, by the way, wouldn't be a bad thing on, this, on a scene like this. And I'm pushing paints around. Okay, so there we have. I think you can see pretty much what I've got here. That's pretty cool. And I'll still, what I'll do is I'll wipe out some of the sun right there in a second and I'll get it down here. Now when we go down here, it's still wet and I should have dried that because what I want to do is I want to do like I did on here. If you look, I want to get some sparkle in the water. Even though it's, you know, it's going to be stormy down here, you can keep the white of the sun going through there. I'm going to put the sun right here again. Uh, later on, I'll just put it in and wipe it out and I'll, I want kind of like the sun shining through there So I wouldn't mind getting that to be a hard edge. So what I want to do is take the water away from that area So I'm just gonna take the water away right now. I wet it all but I'm just gonna take it away from that area And now it's damp and so it'll give me the, these little marks and stuff. So I'll go with the lights first, which is my golden Orange and then maybe a little bit of pink to make it kind of a coral color and that's for the background and I'm going to go across it quickly with my brush on the side to get a little bit of that dryness look. Now see how it's just a little dry. And come across there. Right into the rocks. The rocks are going to be darker. Let's go quick here. we got a lot to do. Then we're going to go with the purple from the sky because it's really dark up here. So right, that's got to come down here right away. And we're going to kind of scrub that in there also. Let this be soft edge as it goes up. And then maybe a little bit, this is going to be dark anyway because of the reflection of the rocks. Oh, this is going to look good. Good job. Good. Joyce um, online is the one who made a suggestion of doing a night or a um, stormy scene instead of doing the same one. I don't like to do the same one like I do in the afternoon. Just kind of boring. And actually, they need to see that both of them. That way you guys can see both. So here now we go. A little rock in there. So that'll be sun coming through there. We can tone it down later on if it is ends up being too much. But all right, there's the water. Now right away we're gonna go in back to the uh, back here. And again, if you're the first timer, excuse me here, um, and you're trying to follow along and paint along while I'm painting, you can stop the video at any time. You're just gonna be live after when you turn it back on. It'll be recorded, and so you'll just have to go from that point on. And you won't be able to ask a question, but. You know, just wait until <laughs> we'll wait until we're after after we get things done, and then you can um, I can answer things later on in the comment section, not on the side in the chat, but in the comments. So now I'm going here. I want to get a little bit of this yellow golden color for that island back there. So I'm just going to take this little bit of this gold, and there's a little island back here. I'm just going to make it the same color as what's back there. In when it comes to the water part, it's not, I mean, that doesn't have that color, the island, but because the sun is shining right down in that area, it's going to make it look like it's in a distance. So that's why I'm using that color. And I know I'm switching off a lot from what the actual color is of the actual painting or photograph, but that's what we artists do. We make things up and we don't have to use it and copy it exactly. I think this picture itself and everybody who goes, this is um, Bass Harbor, I think, or Bass Lighthouse on Acadia in Maine and so I've been there before and I could never you always everybody gets this shot right here this shot that you see up there that's a shot everybody gets and so you could take any shot that you see online because that's <laughs> they're all that shot and so I want to make it a little bit better than what you can actually see there like I said so I made it like a little higher and actually right now I'm gonna go right into the so I got the sky pretty much done I got the water pretty much done Later on, I'll go in there and get some more waves, but I'm going for the big parts. And again, um, hey, Tom. Yeah, Tom was another one from our, um, our workshop at Dillman's. 
And we had Sue, we had t a car there. It was fun. And I also had a workshop in Duluth. And some of those people are also from my thing. So everybody came somewhere they could finally get to do a real time live workshop. And I think they're, they're good. It's very fun to do those. Anyway, let's get back to our lighting and to our um, rocks. I'm going to show you a little something about rocks as soon as I find a sheet of paper. Oh boy, I'm going to have to stop for a second. <laughs> Let me just put this real wash on there and I'll show you a little something. So the first thing I'm going to do is get the rocks, the light part of the rocks. And um, hold on one second, I've got to get a sheet of paper. I wasn't ready for this. Let me see real quick, hold on. Let's get back with one of these. All right. Sorry about this. I want to explain rocks to you. And so I explained this to the class today. And then when you're doing rocks, let me just do this with a paintbrush this time. And so when you're doing rocks, and if you look at these rocks that I have here, pretty much we've got a bunch of these rocks, right? And they're coming up here and they're like this type of thing. And then we got the water coming down here and I got some more rocks and more racks coming in front of that. And so I'm just kind of going to give you an overlay of how you can do these boulders and what the purpose of this is to show you that you have to keep big areas going and you have to keep the racks light on the top and the side you get your dark area. And so this is pretty much what this is. These rocks are pretty much what you see right here. That's all that, right? So here we're going to have trees, right? We're going to be putting trees in there. And I know I should be doing it on the painting, but I'm going to be putting trees here, right? There's going to be a bunch of trees here. Well, all these trees, if you look, those will be the dark that will create the shape around these rocks. So these rocks will be created, those back rocks, by the trees that are darker behind them, right? So that that's that. those are those rocks. Now these rocks, the next layer forward, those will be um, created by the color of the the shadow of the rock behind it so here we have a the shadow of this rock and we always keep the tops of those rocks light it could be a hard edge soft edge but the top of the rocks and the side of the rock is darker right and here's a dark part here's the back rock and it's light so anytime there's a rock in front so now we've got back background trees rock the light part of the top then the side which is dark and as it goes into the crevices it gets even darker and then this rock then is created by the rock behind it, right? So that's negative painting. Now this next rock, and maybe all these rocks, again, we go like this and put the top part where the top part is light. You created a shape already, right? So we, we get rid of the line and we see that the top of the rock is light and the side of it is darker. And it's the shadow part. And then you can even do another, you, know, you can do a third rock right here. You know, so always, now this one rock, is going to be a little bit darker on top and now we are, we talked about scraping with the with a credit card type of thing and so we did that before on rocks right we did that already and so there's more rocks that go down we're going to just do another section of rocks now this one in front maybe we do all these dark and we scrape the top of that these rocks so it all depends on how you want to get the top of the rock light you can either scrape it paint around it and over here where the water is going to be now the water, if you look up here, if you look up there, the water is lighter than these rocks. So this is not going to be a light rock, but it will be, um, it will be light on top, but darker than the water. So here we'll just put a lighter color on top and make it darker than the water. But on the side, it will be darker right here. It'll be darker. So we always keep in mind that the top of the rock will be light. The side is dark and keep it that simple. You know, and then when you're scraping with your credit card, remember to always take, actually I didn't bring the one with me, so I'll take a library card here <laughs> and you scrape, you can scrape this, this top and now that's too wet and not enough pigment. So remember, you have to have enough pigment, a lot of pigment and not too wet to scrape. And before you do this, any time of scraping or any kind of things that you've never done before, practice it first on a scrap sheet of paper. So if I want to scrape, and that's going to be a little bit too much yet. So. And on the side of the water, where the water goes and it hits the, 
the rocks, the water here, that's going to be really dark all the time. That's always really dark right there where the water hits the... And so let's just put another rock here. Let's just make this all dark. I'm going to show you in a second how I scrape. So I may not scrape in this painting as much. We'll see. So I hope you understand what it means by doing the rocks. And we'll do it again on this one. But I'll, I'll let that dry for a second. I'll show you what we do when scraping. So we're going to go and do the same exact thing. Is where I do the light to dark. And so I'm going to put the light parts in here. Do you want to keep white of the rock? Or do you want to make it all just a value that's light? You decide on what you want to do. I'm going to use the yellow glow and maybe a little bit of light down here white because the rocks when they're wet they'll shiny they'll be shiny a little bit and i'll put them on the side of the rock now here i can't put white or use that i have to make it darker the rock than the water so there i'll have to make it where i put it on afterwards maybe a little bit of white paint and so i'm kind of going in there and now do i want a little bit of white edge on this one these are the top rocks again because i'm forming the rock later on with a dark in that area you don't have to do all the dark light dark thing right away like i just did in that example here you don't have to do it all these darks right away you can do them after you get the light washes in first like i'm doing right now see i'm just putting the light washes getting some nice colors in there letting them float down and being that they're light colors they're just creating the color of the rock and not the shape of the rock yet though if i do want a little bit of white left then i have to keep that part of the rock light to make that um look light and white sparkles maybe from the sun hitting that side of rock because the rock may be wet splashed on and so and i'm floating all these light light colors on there first maybe some little grayer colors i didn't do the tree parts yet because that's my darks if you look at the picture the trees are pretty dark right and so they will be pretty, pretty dark too in, in the photo or in the painting i mean so here we go with a little green now there's me a little green in these rocks the moss and stuff I'm going to keep it still not too dark. I'm going to the middle tones and lights. I'm not doing my darks yet of the rocks. I'm going to get those in in a second. I'm just trying to color. Give the, the give these rocks color. And um, Joyce did a great job in the color. I'm kind of trying to copy her. But she had so many beautiful colors in there. It was just amazing. It is an amazing painting to this afternoon. Any questions here? Hello from McKay, hey, Maura. Hey, Sue again. Going in here, we're just going to kind of get some of these dark washes through the bottom. Remember, the rock is like a box. You get the top, the front, the side. And usually the top is the lightest, the side or the front of it. A lot of times it's pointing towards the sun will be your second lightest. And then the back shadow will be the dark. So just keep those things in mind. And then you, when you do your rocks, boulders, you don't do them all one by one. You can do some of them all, you know, together. This area in the photo is all light. So there, I can maybe not do hardly anything afterwards and just keep it at that light. Keep some nice light colors floating in there. Texture, how do you get texture? You can either do it by going across quickly with your brush like this. You can go, um, you know, spatter, you know, spatter down. Get the little color like that. Watch when you're spattering your sky. Otherwise, I put tons of birds in there. <laughs> I guess I could get paper towel and when I spatter, I'll do that later. So now I'm going to go in here, and there's my light colors, right? And I've got to differ my light from my dark so that it comes forward. Like as you see in my photograph here, right there you can see it goes from a light to a dark to a light to a dark. It's constantly top is light and gets to a dark part of the rock. If you don't want to have your eyes go down to that area so much, then just keep it, keep it simple. Just let it be a wash. All right, so that's pretty much going to be that part of the rocks right now, the light parts. I'm going to spatter a little bit of water into it. If I spatter a little water into it, what will I get? I will get watermarks. But hey, wouldn't it be great to get watermarks here that are looking like little, little texture for the rocks? Perfect. Look at that. Now, if you get in your sky, <laughs> you'll have a lot of birds to put in there. <laughs> but look at that texture. It's like salt. It's almost like salt by doing that. But um, I don't want too much white in here because... Too much white. This is not a bright sunny day. It's just it's some light hitting some of the rocks in the here and there that um, is really bright in this area. All right, let me see here. Okay, what is it? <laughs> I think it's time for a break. Okay, <laughs> cheers everybody. <laughs> cheers. Where is it? There it is. So today's is a number nine paintbrush beer. 
Wow, it tastes like coffee. Coffee with a little bit of chocolate. Um, like a mocha. A mocha coffee beer. <laughs> it's pretty good. All right, so the trees. The tre Actually, let's do this um, building first, but I want to get the shadow side of this one this time, a little bit darker. So white. That building is white, so what does that mean? That means you can put any color you want for the shadow. The only, like if let's say that house was more of a light blue, then it would be a darker blue. But anytime you're using white and a white house or something in the shadows, use the shadows, any shadow, and it usually is whatever's around the surface. Like here's a lot of purple and there's a lot of this gold. So that's what I'm gonna use in the shadow because that's what I, you know, it's gonna reflect into that shadow. I think it's dry already, so I'm just gonna go in there. But I love these grips now and these brushes. It's like, it's a really neat grip. Watch my video if you haven't seen that one yet. I think I had it on private for a while. And so you guys didn't get a chance to see it. But um, go on my YouTube channel and check out the grip. How to put grips on your on your brushes. And it'll help them protect them too. Oh, let's keep the light on in here. On this building. Let's do that. I was thinking of doing that this afternoon too. So see how you're using the colors throughout the area here. And then just float it. Just float it in there. And just get some nice colors. And underneath the eave is always, you try to make it golden. Or orange type underneath the eaves is always good to do. Or underneath the eaves, see how it just lights. So it's one of those strong lights when the sun is just out a little bit because it just rained and it's sun's trying to peek through there and stuff. Then we're gonna go and do the lighthouse. So I'm gonna wet the lighthouse back here. First I'll wet it and then I'll just float some pigment in there to let it bleed to the to the left. And so I don't want to make it too dark over here because it the dark the dark trees will show me the edge of that. So I'm just going to take the right side of the of the lighthouse. Get that, put a little bit of that in there. And I don't have to worry about the top part because that's all black. That's all really dark. So I'll just get that like there. Come down. Look at that. Look at the light shining on that house now. Isn't that great? How it just comes in there. And you know that we're going to use the dark of the, of the ground here and this tree right there to make it look just super, super bright sunny just hitting it just light and the top of this um, house will be the rooftop will also be dark dark tiles which i will do later once that's dry all right let's go into our trees here any questions hey carol class this saturday class this saturday at mchenry it will be open this saturday hopefully you're not golfing <laughs> and you can come on up so here we go with the um we'll take some green some dark green but we also have to take some orange into this green because that's what this area is. It's um, a lot of the purples are going to be in that green. A lot of, of the golden this part's going to be in there. So I'm going to go right down here. And we're just going to start painting these trees. I'm going to even take my rigger brush because I think I can do some really cool, cool, um, let's see if I can't tap down and make some really cool pine trees. A little green that means I need a little bit of blue. So I'm just gonna kind of see how you can just. I'm just gonna make the trunk of the tree here a little bit, and then just swish my brush around a little bit, swish it around. And let's see. Let the trunk come down. See how dark that is. We're gonna put that in. We're gonna put those colors in now. I don't like just one color, so I'm gonna put a little bit of the violet in there, and a little lavender. Bring it down in the shadow across the rocks right away. Purple, of course, being my favorite color. We got to put that in there and then go around. Now, remember, these rocks are a little bit darker than the, than the, um, than the water, but that doesn't mean you, you can still want to keep the top of the rock light and the bottom of the rock dark or the, the side, the side and away from the light. You're going to make that dark and especially the part that's hitting the water, make that real nice and dark. Coming up here, creating the next rack. This is shadowing the trees. Maybe there's a bunch of trees in here. So yeah, there's a lot of color in there, but that's okay. Just make it colorful. I don't. You know, it doesn't have to be all green. Green. You just. You know, that's too much green. You want to get a little bit of the violet in there. Because the sky is going to determine a lot of things that happen on the trees too. Because they're all going to be reflecting. Those colors are going to be reflecting into the, especially in a moody scene like this where you're making it moody because of the the whole mood of the scene is that there's this tremendous cloud storms cloud that just came through 
and now it's making it you know more dramatic and that's what's great about making things like you, you couldn't be out here probably taking photographs you don't want to be but we can just make it up we can make this thing up and make just make it look that way you know you're the artist i always tell my my students always you know you got the photo but that doesn't mean you have to just copy it you want to make it better you want to make it just so dramatic and you know that's that's the winning paintings are the ones that are, have the wow factor right and so you gotta give your paintings wow so when somebody comes up to it they just go wow that is cool how'd you think of that why did you think of, why why did you think of that you know it's just getting a photograph and getting it really a wow photograph is hard because we're not photographers but we can do it with with our painting now we can't maybe a lot of times get it with the photograph because again i'm not a photograph I, a photographer i don't know all the tricks of getting some really good pictures but i am a pretty decent painter so i can take those photographs and make them better than they are and that's what i always feel and i think a lot of you guys should be doing don't be stuck with having the you know if there's things wrong with the photograph why are you painting the mistakes in the photograph like the tangents and the and the off-center stuff or anything that doesn't look right in the photograph change it make it nice make it yours if you don't know those mistakes, that's how come you just keep on painting and and you take my class so you can tell you what's wrong <laughs> so, <laughs> so here we go here we go down here hey marianne you're late ah you'll catch up <laughs> so now here look i'm gonna get the side of the get to the side of the um lighthouse that identifies a lot of times you do things that identify the shapes by negative painting shapes you know like the lighthouse here is not identified by the color it is but by the darks around it you know and then we even got a fence a little fence right here a little little railing i should say not a fence but i don't like railings i'd rather do a little fence so i'm just going to do a little fence right here the fence looks more real you know looks cuter <laughs> than a railing that they have on an area because it it's, a, it's where tourists go and of course they don't want them to fall down this big hill all right let's put a little bit of warmth in this area too doesn't mean you have to have it all dark you can have a little bit of this gold in there too i know it's a small brush but I, if i squiggle this brush around it looks more like texture for that kind of tree now last week when we did the tuscany uh they were not pine trees they were cypress trees and i know a couple of you and i myself had done that before where i make it look like a um make it like a pine tree and the cypress tree doesn't look right and where a pine tree doesn't look right in an area where it's supposed to be cypress trees because they're tall and slender and they don't have branches like i'm doing right now that hang up they're going downwards you know tall big green like rocket ship looking type of trees so when you're doing a certain tree for a certain area try to make sure your drawing is on because again drawing is number one drawing is number one so here we're going through here all right bending over here and just trying to get all these little nice little tree trunks in here that's pretty small let's get our bigger truck now <laughs> bigger brush it's take me wherever to get that tree done what time is it ah we got plenty of time still we're almost done <laughs> so we go down here and we just get the shape of the back of this building right because we're using it dark and once an area is wet what do you do you flow the color in there don't keep those wet areas left with one color they love to have other colors come in and float around make a float around party in your washes and look at all these colors i can put in there just float them around let them have little dots there now we're going to take a little bit of this dark through this area um on the top it's going to be lighter all right remember the top part is lighter we'll make it like a little bit of grasses we'll just put texture by not um making it wet texture is easier to get on hot dry paper so if you're in an area where you want to get texture leave that area dry and then just scumble over it scumble such an important word <laughs> another one of my made-up words not that's nah, not made up but scumbling is just taking your brush over over the surface and going like this just kind of just getting a little texture bringing this down where it's wet it's gonna it's gonna flow it gets soft edge okay here now i created a top of that edge right look at it i'm getting i'm creating the top of the rocks i'm not going all the way up because then that would mean i'm going to my light area of those rocks so i'm gonna wet up here and maybe make those rocks 
a little bit orange here or just make them partly hard edge and some soft edges but see how i suddenly this pops forward that goes back this part stays light on top and that's going to be a light part and then some parts you can just since i don't want to have anything but looking at certain areas i leave it um soft edged it's blurry that makes it blurry right and so put some blurriness into your paintings and here i'm gonna go down any questions all right get me some questions guys i don't know what to talk about anymore <laughs> uh, that's i know you don't believe that i always talk i talk non-stop <laughs> All right, so what are you doing now? We're doing these rocks here. Um, let me do them. Yeah, let's do these rocks. I think it's dry by now. Yep. So again, what do we do? We, we look for the top of the rocks and the dark parts of the top rock above it. What color? Whatever color you like that's dark and that you've been using already. Now, I don't like to always just use the same color through here. I'm going to take in, again, once I get water in there, I'll flip a little bit of... And you notice how I didn't wet it all first because... I'm going to want some soft edges, but mostly I do want some hard edges. These rocks are, you know, there's a lot of little boulders in here. And so I want some hard edges so I can see the top of them. And the top will be light, but then the side of this one above it will be dark. Here again, it's the top is the top of this rock was done by the rock behind it. And so they just all come out. Now, I know you want me to scrape, right? I mean, a lot of people like scraping and to do that, uh, let's just show you a little area. Oh, I left this too late, didn't I? Well, maybe I can't. <laughs> no, but I left that too late. Sorry, guys. Forgot about that. <laughs> so we'll go back and we'll do a little, a little scraping over here. So let's say I want this to have the area to be dark here. And I want to scrape it out later on. So I'll put some nice dark parts in there. I'll have to wait to a certain moment. And then I'll scrape away the top of the rock because that's the light part again. I don't do it like in really important spots unless it's really farther back. But over here, I kind of want to create my own shape and my texture. Um, and the scraping sometimes doesn't give you exactness to the to the rock because you're basically scraping with the side of your with your credit card or card, anyways. And sometimes you're not going to get the exact look or the exact scrape you exactly want. Where if I'm painting and I get these textures, I can be very distinct of where I want that dark where I want the light stopping or do I want a soft edge hard edge something you really can't do with the scraper because you're kind of just scraping and hoping that you get something unless you practice a real lot and you have a certain technique of getting exactly what you want when you're scraping I don't know maybe you do so then don't listen to me <laughs> then do it that way and so now we've got these beautiful rocks here and I'm just going to get in here now this down here will be really dark and we'll go around some of these rocks I'll make these rocks a little bit darker. Making them dark also doesn't mean you need to make them ugly colored. That doesn't mean you can't like put orange in there, purples, you know, pure purple, some red, some cr crimson. You know, have some fun with the colors. Though if you use them in one spot, make sure you use them somewhere else too. So you don't have that, that look of where it's like, oh, what's that color? It's the only color there in the whole painting. Then your eye goes too much to that, that particular point. So watch that a little bit there. And so I'm gonna make this a little bit darker right here so that this pops out. And then there's a lot of lines go down and stuff and get crevices. Different shapes in your rocks. Don't make everything the same. I know some people will always make the rocks all the same. Like every single rock has the same shape. They're all lined up like a, you know, like somebody put them there. And make it so that somebody doesn't look like they put them there. Like they just naturally came there and it's so natural that they're all different. That's how you make them look different. Is just don't make them look the same. <laughs> That's obvious, right? <laughs> okay, I should stop talking and just finish this thing, right? <laughs> Maybe you could give us some drawing lessons since it's so important. Yes, I will have to do that. <laughs> um, actually, I'm coming out with that um, sketchbook one of these days and um, hopefully get that out maybe at least in a, maybe another half a year where um, I, I teach you how to do a working from your imagination, work from your head. Because you um, work uh, sketches from, uh, when I used to have life drawing, it was great, you had the model there, but once the model went off the stage, I wouldn't know how to draw it. And so I learned in my advertising career that I had to learn how to 
sketch from your head, from your imagination. Now watch here, I'm going to scrape. So I just did that, and so I'm going to scrape this. See how it just came, comes back? It's just, and it's so hard to control that exactly. And there we got a few rocks going in there. See, you can put, do it a little bit like that too. And just scrape in there. I know a lot of you like scraping, but go ahead, scrape is fine. Scraping is fine. It's just sometimes not as, as um, perfect as actually painting it. But that's fun. Yeah, go ahead. No problem. <laughs> no problem with that. <laughs> All right, let me think. I mean, look at it from a distance. And so for me, look at a distance, all I look is at my screen to see how it's coming up. And I think when it comes to the value study, this area in here being blurry is okay, but I think it has to be darker in here. So I'm going to float some color through here. I don't think we need this. I just made that dark in there. Float some nice colors. sure about this area either I don't really need that if there's too many layers like too many of these then you have to, it gets too complicated so I try to keep things simple when it comes to the composition that you got to keep things simple don't um, overwork little areas and then you don't know where your eyes going everywhere because you have too much happening in spots and if there's too much happening in spots then your eye doesn't know where to stop it doesn't know where to go to the center of interest which is your lighthouse up there Spatters, how do I get that there? Okay, that scraping didn't work out bad though. Isn't that kind of nice, the scraping? That's pretty cool. Now down here, I went totally opposite of my value study because the value study said this rock was dark against the light water. And what I did is I made dark water and I made this dark behind it. So I'm stuck with that. So we're gonna keep it that way. And then we'll make this a little bit more colorful. And back here, maybe what we'll do is we'll, we'll make this part all washed together a little bit there. Again, I don't want my eye coming down here. Who cares about this little corner? I want your eye to go up here, and I want your eye to be over here. And while that's, I think that's dry, I'm gonna, I am going to go in here and show you how I'm going to, this is dry. I'm going to take and I'm going to wipe out my sun in here. I'm just going to take and blot this. And I can work, no, I can work flat now. So basically what I was saying about the drawing is that um, drawing is something you have to learn on your own and you have to basically take a take subject matter and look at it, look at it, look at it and see if you can't in your sketchbook then draw it from your imagination. Try to just draw it after you've, after you've studied an object. Like to take a tea kettle for instance, put it there in front of you, look at it, look at it, look at it. Don't draw it while you're looking at it, just study it. Then after you get it all studied up and you think you can draw it, Take it, put it away, and don't look at it again until you, after you had done your drawing. That's how you learn how to draw. That's how I learned how to draw then after a while because I had to learn how to draw things from my imagination as a storyboard artist. And I finally figured out that that's the way to do it. And I was actually told by Max Ramp, who was one of my instructors slash also um, buddies who I worked with. He knew how to do it really well, and so I just asked him, how do I do that? I, I can't do that. I've taken years and four years of life drawing, I couldn't do it. But he showed me that, you know, just take it and little by little learn and study it and memorize the image of shapes. All right, so now I've got a little bit of the, the light going through here. I could put a little white in there too. Let it float though. Remember, if you, anytime you're I'm using white, let it float. Don't use it, don't use it thick. Use it with water. Like put it in there and just, I'm gonna just let it shine through there a little bit. I can put a little white here. So wet it first, wet it first and then if you want to use white, let it first and then let it float on the top of the surface. And it'll give you a soft edge and it'll look very, it'll, it won't look as opaque. You don't want it opaque because it, then it will look unnatural if it's opaque, which that is right there because I didn't use water. I'm just putting a little bit of the sun, like it's trying to shine through there a little bit, right? All right, let's go right to our um, lighthouse. I'm going to put a little bit of reflection down into the water right away. So I've got this in my brush. I'm gonna use a little purple here, little waves. Same thing with this. Here it's a little bright. I'll take a little bit of purple. All right. Now the lighthouse. Let's get in there with a small brush. 
get in there and just draw exactly what you see in the photograph. Here's one time where you take and just do what you see. There's no making up anything. I did make it taller, but other than that, I'm just going to go in here now, close up, and well, that's even too big a brush. I'm doing that really small stuff, so use the brush that best fits the purpose. And the best brush for this is something really small, and so I'm going to go in here and just draw a little circle on top of the house, draw the top of the roof, and this is probably the boring part to watch because it's just tedious to go in there, you know, and um, get these parts done nice and clean take your time don't rush this unless you have a real loose style if you have a real loose style of course you can just do this really quickly and just go through there real quick and get that and it's more of a loose style then so you'll be looser by just doing a really fast brush stroke still getting the what you want like the drawing wise but it'll just not be as tight you know you get in there and not get as tight with this and I'm actually using just black, but then once I get a water in there, you know, you know me, I'm going to start floating stuff in there even. I know I want to make this light, but um, uh, now, now I can't. <laughs> so, <laughs> I just made it dark, so forget about that. So we're just going to go in here. I can, I can wipe it out maybe. Let's see, I'm going to put this. Let's put some nice violets and stuff coming in from the left side here. Watch, let that float, let that float. You can always float it. I can put a little orange underneath there. Because I always like putting orange in the E's of things. Let them shine that brightness underneath. Then the top of this lighthouse is a dark, also a dark line across it. We're getting 21, 22, 7, 7, 22. A couple minutes, we got it, we got this, we got this. I got the whole timing thing because of my job as an illustrator because that we had so much time to do things and so you got really good at knowing how long it took you to do things and an hour is a lot of time a long time sometimes for um doing imagery that we i know if i had an hour i make sure i just do hours worth of work and get it done it may not look as tight maybe as a um, like a two-hour drawing will be but you just do the time that you have I got really good at that. When the meeting came at a certain time, it had to be done. So you get get used to getting whatever you need to get done. But again, don't don't if you're following me, don't feel like you have to go this fast. I have years and years of experience of getting done things done fast because of my job, and that doesn't have anything to do with your ability. Uh, I paint a lot slower when I'm in my studio and I'm listening to music and I. Just got the radio playing and I'm just sitting here painting my for myself. And then it's a lot different and I'm not painting this fast. You know, why? Why would I have to paint that fast? And I'm enjoying myself and then just coming in and just make a nice painting. So there we got the side coming in there. See how nice that looks? With the now the the stonework here, I'm gonna just put a little bit of lavender in there just to make it look like there's some stonework in here. gray but I've never gotten this tight I don't think in most paintings I do <laughs> that's a pretty tight painting there I'm not gonna leave rays coming down it's just I could do that with the airbrush I do have the airbrush I was showing you guys the one we cut it use the airbrush but I don't want to be that that tight with this I'm gonna do a few things that are tighter but I, I don't want to get that tight with this I just want to get in there get you to look at the at the lighthouse and get a nice mood onto it I don't, I'm not going to go photographic on this one, like with the light rays coming in there. That's almost too, to me, too much. You can see this light glow in there, and you could take an airbrush, like I said, and put that in there and actually make a little haze over things, but again, that's getting photographic on me, and I, I just tend to not go that far with the things. Again, up to you. You decide. They're all good. It's, everything's good. You can do it really tight, not tight very loose we were just talking today about eric weigart's class and how my students took his class because i always have everybody take everybody's class it's good to take a lot of people's different classes and he paints very loose and some people love it some people like to have that look and some people like to paint that look it's up to you whatever you like all right here i got kind of lost some of the lights coming through that tree so i'm gonna put a little bit back in white 
and orange. I kind of put too many in there. <laughs> so I'm going to kind of put back in some of the lights. All right, I think other than spattering. All right, where's Tina? Tina has got to tell me what to do next. <laughs> Tina, you out there? Tina, you out there? Let me know what I got to do. Maura, where's your friend Tina? <laughs> so now we got the background. And so let me just show you a little bit closer here, a little bit closer. And what we're going to do now is we're going to spatter. We're going to spatter this side with some, oh, waves, waves. Tina, where are you? Waves, you didn't tell me to do waves. So now the waves in here, you, one thing about waves, you have to put them in there as many as you want for that kind of particular look. So if there's really wavy, there's no like, way of getting this to look like a bunch of waves without a shortcut you just have to put them all in so see i'm going to just start with uh, putting in these little waves a little darker down here and as they go up i'm going to get smaller but again there's no shortcut to this you just got to go in there and just put them all in all the waves if you want it that wavy now if the water is really still and there's not many waves in there then yes you don't have to put these many in but if you start putting in like these little, little small waves which is a lot then that's you gotta put them all put them all in you just there's no way of like again there's no shortcut to this i'm just going to put in the waves make the dark waves a little bit darker here and i like to make them sharp so i wish my brush back and forth like this across the surface back and forth a little bit I've seen some watercolors where they do every single little wave and it looks cool. Uh, again, don't do it that way. I kind of just go back and forth like this and whisk the brush. Again, practice this kind of wisping of the brush so you can get like really sharp edges. And I'm going horizontally. See, I'm going to use horizontal look. So now it looks more like waves. And if you look up close, see there's a little bit more waves in there now. And I can also get my reflections in there a little bit more. And also this rock should be a little bit darker here and you make the rocks along the water is a little bit darker because they usually are and then the dark um, reflections underneath those I almost forgot that wow am I leaving the light dark where Pam are you leaving the light dark this area I think so. I think this area though should be a little bit darker. Now that I look at it, I think in here we need to get a little bit more of these trees darker to get that look of darkness. Or should that be all dark? What do you guys think? Should this area be darker? And no, that will push that. I think so. Let me do that. Let's put a whole big wash on there. And how much time do we have? Two, three minutes. Okay, we can do that. <laughs> it doesn't take three minutes to do a wash, a big wash over something. So we're going to take a little bit of water and we're just going to go over in this area because I'm looking that there's so much light here and I'm not directing my eye up to this area. So I put my hand over this. I'm noticing that I should... Light in the top. Oh, the light at the top of the lighthouse. Um, I really can't do it because I put the dark on top of there. I could put white on there, which I may do, but I think still this has to be a little bit darker to get my eye over there. So let's let's darken this a little bit. And my value study kind of says, if you look at the picture here, it's pretty much dark in this area right here to get my eye to go back up in this area. I want my eye to be pushed to here. And if this is just as much contrast down here, and of course your eye will not go up there because it's going to stay down here a little bit and just linger down there. And so now that pushes my eye up to the light area, right? It just kind of comes right up in there. So I know you didn't mean that, but um, thanks for <laughs> pointing out the dark areas. <laughs> that worked out good too. And so I'm going to put that in there. All right. So I think for the lighthouse light, and since we have one minute left, we're just going to put a little bit of white right in the center here. I'm just going to smudge it, I think. I'm just going to put a little white there. I don't want to put the rays again. I'm not I'm not a big rays guy where you put rays in there. Uh, that to me is just kind of like looks too, too postcardy. I, I don't know. It's just something that I don't like to do as much. And if it's natural like that, where you get a little bit of that, that is okay. 
But other than that, I think we're good. I think we're just gonna leave it at that. All right, guys. Let me take the tape off and another another Thursday. Done. Is that too late? To <laughs> okay, we're done. We're done. All right. Let's see. <laughs> Let's take the tape off and then we'll go to this scene right here and um, take the tape off and ask me the last questions. Ask me the last thing. <laughs> So we're going to take the tape off again. Always pull your tape away from you like this. Always go away. You don't want to rip into the painting because sometimes you can rip the paper, especially on black paper. We noticed that this week when we were working on black paper. And if any time from now until a couple months from now, if you want to get yourself some black, black watercolor paper, it's by Stonehenge Aqua. Um, get yourself a pad. You can get a pad on Amazon or any art store, you can get the um, Stonehenge Aqua Black. And we will be doing a painting on black, a watercolor on black. Oh, there we go. See how nice that looks with the dark in that corner? Good job, good job guys. Thanks for telling me that. <laughs> and so let's see the difference between this one and the one this afternoon. And so here we got this one, which is during the day. And here the storm's coming in. And oh, it looks, oh, it's also a little bit bigger. <laughs> So let's push this aside here a little bit. So there you have it, guys. Um, do some nice rocks. Do some nice um, drawing. Change some things up if they're not right and they're not looking right, the photos. Just make sure you get things looking right in your photo. Just because the photo is a certain way doesn't mean you have to paint it that way. So there you have it. Ask me questions in the comments if you, don't get them, if you didn't get them in here today, tonight. And I don't think I see any other questions. The beacon, yeah, I just did a little bit light there. I think that's about all I'm going to put up in there. All right, so again, for another Thursday, guys, put them on my Facebook page. We want to see them, and we'll all comment. Love seeing you. You guys are doing actually great, so keep on doing it, and we'll see you next Thursday. And also, suggestions. <laughs> I'm running out. This was a suggestion by somebody um, last week. I forgot who it was, but um, they told me they wanted lighthouses. So, again, I will listen. I like both paintings. Awesome. All right, thanks, guys.